Hi, welcome to the part 18 of this video series. These are all real exam questions. You might get the same questions in the exam. Please subscribe to my channel and click the like button. If you like my videos, please drop in your comments if you have some suggestions or any constructive feedback. So for questions 1 to 90, please refer to the previous parts of this video series. Let's go to question 91. Now, as you are China, these are the different options that they have provided. We have to say which one is correct. The first one says is operated by Microsoft. That is wrong. It is not operated by Microsoft alone. In China, it is operated by 21 Vianet. So this is wrong. The second one says has feature parity with Azure Global. That is correct because whatever feature is launched, say in US, Azure US or Azure UK, there will be a parity and Azure China will slowly adopt it. So there will be that parity. This is correct. Let's look at the third option. It suggests services can be accessed from China only, which is wrong. You can access that services outside China also. So this is wrong. And the last one says it's a distinct separate instance. It's not a separate instance of Azure. It is operated by Wirenet, but it is not a separate instance. So this is the right answer. The next question talks about Azure policy initiative definition. See, this is basically a collection of policy definitions. If you see the documentation here, this is explaining a scenario where the policy definition is done for multiple subscriptions and it says the same is true for initiative definition, definition as well. So the second one is wrong because it is not uh, Azure definition assignments. It is then the third one is talking about blueprint definitions. Blueprint is similar to infrastructure as a code. So if you see here, blueprints, these are repeatable creation of governed environments. So if you have large scale deployments, which involves Azure resource manager templates, role based controls and policies and so on, then you can use blueprints. In this context, blueprints are never used for policy initiative definition. Policies are organization policies where you want to enforce, for example, a certain big VM. You don't want any, any Tom, Dick and Harry to create it because it will attract a lot of costs. That is why you can create policies. So this one is wrong and let's see RBAC. See, in the policy initiative, you never do RBAC. You first have to do policy definitions. Okay. So this is the right answer. Let's look at this one. The first one here says describe which personal data is collected. Out of these, we have to move them into these buckets like here, here, whatever. For example, consider CVS Pharmacy. Now they are collecting some data. Now you want to know what is this data used for in future? Will they sell my data? Will they monetize my data? And the first one describes the same. The first one is talking about describes which personal data is collected. So you go to CVS Pharmacy, you give your personal data, they want to know which data you are collecting, how the data will be used and what is the data used for. Okay, that is important to understand. If you want to understand this, you will have to refer the Microsoft privacy statement. Okay, this will align here. In the Azure world, if you want to understand how will Azure use your data, this is you can read this okay now let's move to the next one now consider you have a client called general electric okay and uh, they have gone with azure azure or microsoft has Gen ge as a client and they are signing a document in that document that is the document which is a legal agreement it is sort of a contract but it details the obligations between microsoft and the customer in this case in our example the customer is General Electric. So General Electric would want to know how will Microsoft process the data and how will it secure the customer's data, including the personal data. So that is all listed in the data protection amendment, uh, addendum, sorry. Now let's look at the last one. It says defines the data processing and security terms for online services. If you are talking about online services, be stupid. We use the keep it simple and stupid formula. If you are talking about online terms, this is the online terms. 
because we are talking about online services which includes disclosure of processing data and so on these are all online service terms so this is the final answer let's move to the next question here it is talking about can we use azure policy to apply tax to resources what are tax see the simple thing is use tax to organize your azure resources and management hierarchies for example ge has multiple departments for example they have department like finance hr id so for each of these departments for example finance whatever resources they are using for example they use two vms hr uses five vms it uses 10 vms and you want to be very sure that looking at something i should be able to understand okay these are the vms for the finance department in the bill if i see i can understand through tags that okay these vms are for finance these vms are for hr and this is what i am paying for the it it department so can we create a policy to apply tax to resources yes you can create policies to apply tax okay this is yes because through policies you can enforce that anything that gets assigned to the finance department any resources will automatically get the tag say tag underscore fin okay who will manual otherwise who will manually keep doing it you know it is so difficult to maintain it doing it manually the second one says you can add multiple tags to the same as your resources yes if you have suppose one resource vm one vm and the same uh, resource can be a part of multiple tags that is possible the last one says an azure resource inherits the tags from the resource group so for example you have a resource group and under that resource group you have vm1 vm2 and synapse okay by default whatever tags this guy has here it will not be cascaded here it will not hence the answer for the last one is no so this is the final answer lock it now let's look at the last question for this part so to understand the question see you have rg1 one resource group and then under that you have one vnet1 a resource and what you do is you are assigning it a not allowed policy so the moment you assign a not allowed policy what will happen the first one says vnet1 is deleted automatically it will not be deleted automatically and it is a tricky question i am surprised that they ask such questions in az900 this is a tricky one it will not automatically delete it will mark it as non-compliant so what will happen is it will function normally and it will be visible as non-compliant in the compliance report it will not be moved automatically to the another resource group this is the wrong one and it will not be a read-only object you can still use it it will continue to function normally but it will be non-compliant so this is the answer we lock this please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button if you like my videos this brings us to the end of part 18 see there are so many playlists already uploaded on this channel please refer to these playlists these will help you clear the cloud certifications if you see this playlist this one this is having 17 videos these are all latest questions and then there are other playlists for example this one which has eight videos these eight videos on az 900 is still relevant you can refer these see you in the next part